Hello, my name is Roman Harkovsky. Today I would like to share with you a discussion that I recently had with one of IBM customers. And the discussion was around the cost of WebSphere application server and JBoss application server. For that discussion I will use my cost calculator which is available publicly. You could see on my blog ibmadvantage.com you could download the calculator if I click on this article you could see it was just recently updated in August it now reflects new pricing that IBM has announced for WebSer application server it's called virtual processor core this pricing significantly reduces the cost of acquisition for WebSer application server and it makes it even more competitive compared to JBoss with that let me switch to the calculator and show you discussion that we had using the actual numbers. I will use approximate numbers, not exactly the same that we used in discussion with this customer, but you will still get the point. So here's the calculator and again I mentioned that you can download this full Excel spreadsheet from the blog and by the way if you do download it make sure you download the latest version every time you use the calculator because this is updated once a month. Uh, so you really want to use latest calculator. Let's get started. For now, I have all of the data entry empty, and that's why nothing gets calculated, obviously. And for this sake of discussion, let's say we're using one year of calculation. When you hover uh, with the mouse, you could see that you can enter data, and it tells you what exactly needs to be entered. So in this case, let's enter single year for the calculation. For deployment type, this customer wanted to deploy a third-party application. They have not built it themselves. It's a COTS application that requires application server runtime, and that particular application supports JBoss and WebSphere application server. Now, that application certified with WebSphere application server network deployment, it would run on WebSphere app server base, but the vendor only certified it on network deployment. Uh, I will show you network deployment numbers, but any application that runs on network deployment obviously will work on WebSphere application server base because it's exactly the same product. The only difference is that you don't get JMS and EJB failover, and you have different administration for those products. So for now, let me pick base, because for most of the applications where you deploy them yourselves, uh, and if you feel like you can get them running with JBoss, 99% of the time they will run just fine with WebSphere base, because generally people don't build applications these days that require EJB or JMS failover. And if you need just HTTP session failover, then WebSphere base will work just fine. How many physical servers? So let's imagine we have a certain number of servers and the reason this needs to be entered is we just need to calculate how many cores do we need to run a certain workload. So let's say we have one physical server or we could say uh, what I will do I will simplify this so it's easy to see how many cores. So we'll say each physical server has just one socket one core obviously you cannot buy that kind of server these days because they, they just don't exist but I will say uh, let me use 50 cores so my application requires 50 cores now some of the numbers start to show up but not all of them just yet so we'll complete the picture and you will see numbers for all of the application server uh, products uh, so we have 50 cores IBM PVU rating we will assume 70 but for virtual processor cores the PVU does not make any difference and we can change it to whatever we like so for instance we could say um, we can change it to 100 and it doesn't really change anything I, I can even change it to 120 and it still doesn't change anything so I'll, I'll, I can keep it as 100 it, it doesn't matter for VPC PVU rating makes no difference HTTP server. Now this application had to have HTTP server sitting in front of the application so I would say yes and as soon as I say yes 
it adds a little bit of cost to JBoss because JBoss does not come bundled with HTTP server. You have to purchase JBoss EWS, which is Apache. In case of IBM, HTTP server is bundled free of charge. Data greed and caching. In case of WebSphere base NMD, it is bundled with WebSphere. In case of JBoss, it is not. But this application was not using caching, so I'll say no. Now for JDK, because this customer wanted to run on Red Hat Linux, which comes with OpenJDK, they would get JDK support, so I would say no. You don't have to buy JDK support, but if it was running on Windows or elsewhere, I will have to say yes, you do have to buy JDK support for JBoss, and if I said yes, you could see JBoss cost increases to 175000 because you need JDK support from Oracle unless you're willing to run on an unsupported JDK. So again, this was Red Hat environment and therefore JDK support was not necessary as a separate item it was included, so I'll say no. So it takes it down to 50,000 for JBoss. Because this has multiple servers, in reality, I, I'm saying 50 cores here, but it could be 10 servers, five cores each or some that kind of number for distributed management i will m most likely need jboss operations network and the cost of that is included in jboss subscription but the database is not included so we'll have to add the cost of the database http session failover was not required so i'll say no ldap was not required i'll say no and this was a brand new project so there was no existing web sphere that had to be taken into account. For number of support contacts for 50 cores, customer wants to have six people being able to call for support, just in case the main administrator or his partner gets sick or something. They wanted to have six support contacts, which costs a little bit extra with JBoss. Now the discount level for the software, for 50 cores, it is safe to assume for all of the vendors, just roughly 20% discount will apply to the same vendors. It doesn't really matter because you can always negotiate, but I argue negotiation, probably you can negotiate quite similar discounts with different vendors. In terms of the VM, this was a hypervisor environment all of the servers were virtualized so the virtualization was 100 percent and the application server was only using roughly half of that capacity uh, for ibm and jboss it does not matter but for oracle it does which this customer was not considering oracle because the application they were deploying did not even support web logic now the worm backup was not required Cold backup was not required. Difference in performance between WebSphere and WebLogic uh, in general, roughly about 31%. And it's about the same with JBoss as well. Uh, so we put 31% here, and that adds a little bit of extra cores to the JBoss configuration. So now the interesting part is that because it's a caught application, there is a production environment, and there are two non-production environments. These two non-production environments are not used permanently. They're used a couple of times a year for about one month at a time, meaning total of two months usage for those non-production environments. Now in size they're roughly about the same as a production environment. So both of the pre-production, the performance testing and quality assurance uh, environments, they had to be stood up and run for about two months in a year. What that means, we have peak workload for two months in a year. So we have, we enter number two over here. Now in terms of the load in the system, the peak to normal ratio, because these pre-production environments are equivalent in size to production, the peak to normal ratio is three. So I enter three. And what that means is for two months in a year, you have triple the workload. Now for the remaining 10 months, you only have one third of the workload. And that's where you could see the difference between WAS base being $51,000 for that one year and JBoss EAP 185000 
Now, what if we switch to was ND? So I go to this cell and I say, well, let's configure was ND. With was ND, it's going to cost $193,000 for this configuration and for JBoss, $185,000. So this is very, very similar where you get more mature product with more management capability where was ND has intelligent management, it has version deployment, multiple versions of the application, it has health management, dynamic clustering, it has lots of features that you don't get with JBoss EAP roughly for the same price. Um, you, you could argue the cost of these two is almost identical, was ND and JBoss. Uh, and again, this is because of the VPC pricing for WebSphere. But again, I would argue, because you get so many more features and intelligent management with was ND, it's not really a fair comparison. And for this COTS application, more appropriate environment would be was base. Or it could be a mix, where in the pre-production you could use was base, in the production you could use was ND perhaps, uh, or some, some kind of a mixture. Uh, so you could see the differences where WebSphere was base is roughly one third, well, actually less than one third of the cost of JBoss EAP. So this was a discussion we had with my customer. I think it was quite interesting and useful for both IBM and for our customer. And I hope you found that to be beneficial and you could do the same cost comparison yourself using this TCA cost calculator. Thank you.